Okay, today I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to do a very simple project for some of the ones that are beginning at woodwork and uh, it's, uh, it's all done with hand tools except for the dowels. Speaking of the dowels, uh, I'd like to give a shout out for Al uh, Portado, the rebel turner. He's sick in hospital at the moment. Al, I took out the turning machine and I turned these dowels. Now, everything else is done with, can be done with hand tools, right? And you can buy down. We can't buy down here. Uh, so I also want to, the one who's encouraging people to use uh, hand tools is Rustic Dave. I used to live in County Kerry, and he's got a good channel there where he makes simple stuff, and it's a really good channel for anyone beginning at carpentry. There'll be a link down in the description to both uh, Rebel Turner and to Rustic Dave, uh, and I'll also put it up, up here. So I'm going to make a, a standard brick because this is 40 wide and this is the, they're all going to be 15 millimeter this way. But this is 40, so I'm going to make consistently. You can make square ones 40 by 40 and rectangular ones uh, 40 by 80. Now you can do that yourself. You can make it one and a half by by three inches if you want to in your imperial if if, if, if you don't use metric. But I use, I use both metric. So what I'm going to do is then is I'm going to cut uh, I'm going to cut a pile of rectangles first. Right? The rectangle is the standard brick, just like in Lego you'd have a standard rectangular brick, and basically they can build them up much easier. And then I will make a few triangles as well. Now I'm going to I'm going to use hand tools for making these because I know some of uh, some of my followers and friends there, and I follow them too. Uh, they're, they're DIY guys and they're only starting into carpentry and I've done my apprenticeship back 30 years, nearly 40 years, or more than 40 years ago when I started my apprenticeship and uh, we only had hand tools then, we had a brace for making a hole, we didn't have an electric drill in the beginning and, and then when we were learning. So I'm going to use uh, I'm going to use hand tools for the rest of this and I'm gonna, I think I'm going to hand sand them as well, probably. Now, you could use, uh, you could use a tenon saw like this one here. Uh, most people would use a tenon saw. Uh, but for this, uh, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use, normally I use uh, the Ryoba. This is a mini Ryoba here. Uh, a, a Ryoba compact. Uh, it's for more to, uh, it's make, usually for making a tenon and things like this. But for this one, I'm going to use an even finer one, which is called uh, a dosuki. This is a dosuki here. You see, it's got a, it's got the uh, like on on the tenon. So uh, it's a finer blade. I think this is point four or point three millimeters thick. It's so thin. I don't really, it's like there's no set on the teeth. Set yourself up. Get your stopper. You're going to be making plenty of these. Get your first one and make yourself up a little. Uh, uh, mitre box and uh, then you start you just start cutting and you will have very little sanding when you're after using this one take out your wedge and we'll see the cut there is like so smooth, it'll hardly need any sanding. I'll show you on the other camera there, I don't know if you can see it there. So that brick, there's one standard brick made already. Now that we've set up the jig, we can make we can make 20 or 30 of these standard bricks. And then we'll make half sides, and then we'll make the triangle one, which would be, they can use for making a roof if they're building a house. Now I have uh, the half bricks, I made eight pieces of each. so. Uh, I think that should be sufficient. Uh, well, let's try and make these triangles now. Put the ruler underneath this so that uh, 
this is kept up off it and it won't bind. And uh, nice and slowly, just got to take your time. But once you get your little trench made, you put your two hands on it then and go nice and slowly. semi-circles. Okay? Now, this is the part of the video where you say to me, use your scroll saw. I don't have a scroll saw. And this month I can't afford one. And if you have one and you don't want it anymore, just send it to me. So while since I use the coping saw, There's going to be, if you're using your, it's just a lot more sanding afterwards than with the, uh, you could have used this one for the brick it's a bit smaller, but uh, no, I'm going to leave that. So we've got an arch and, uh, so uh, I've got the arches made up now and uh, four arches, two for each child and, uh, and we'll sand up these ones later. Uh, now I'm tempted to do a dowel. <laughs> Okay, I'll do it that way. So now the, uh, we're finished the task of, uh, of uh, sanding them down. It was a big job, <laughs> uh, sanding by hand, but they came out rather nice. Uh, and then in the meantime, I was waiting. My, my wife got a new set of paint, so I'm borrowing her primary colors. She's got the other artist colors over there, and my wife's all the older paintbrushes. And Kira is a painter, so she wants to see what we're going to do now as well. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is I've got the primary colour, so you decide which colour you're going to use first. You're going to do them all. So you're going to divide them up. I have two sets here. So with the, with the rectangular one we have plenty. Right? So we'll divide that into half and then half again. So that's one fourth. So that will all be in one colour. Now with the other ones, because we don't have so many of them, we won't bother doing that. Uh, with the square ones I'll do it as well, half, one quarter for one colour. And with these other ones, uh, we don't have a lot of these pieces, so the arches, we will paint the arches all the same colour, okay? So, we don't decide what colour we're going to paint them. And with all the semi-circuits will be a, a contrasting colour. And with these, we paint four one colour and four another colour. So, for now then, uh, if we start off, I'm going to use, uh, well, I'll go find the colours, we'll go red first. Uh, I think we'll have to take about two coats, or three coats. So we're going to do all this one in red, and we can do, we'll do half of these in red. And the triangles, we have five for each person, so we can do three, or two, and four all together in red. Uh, and then we will, we're not going to do if we do the arches in blue, we'll do these in red or yellow, so we, pro pro we probably won't do these in red. So red is our first colour, and we're going to paint all these red. Okay. 
I can try this before. I might need to add some water to it. Yeah. This is an artist acrylic, child safe. I don't even have a palette, but we have a palette there, but Kira has the palette. Now how we're going to paint them is I'm going to paint one side and then let it dry like this and then come over to the other side. That's the only way I can do it. You can make uh, pyramids there. Uh, I have a soft brush here and a hard brush here. It's a harder one. So we'll just we'll just test it first. Yeah, that's fine. And so when we come from the other side, it's not the overlap is not going to be noticed. So I'll just go along then. You don't have to be very arty. I used to do painting, uh, interior and exterior painting before, not not art painting, but well, art painting at school. Uh, so we we'll just go along and we'll do all the red ones like this. And, uh, I'd say they will dry fairly quick. It's humid here today, but when you're using acrylic paints, humidity doesn't matter. It's not like with lacquers. When I'm using lacquer here, I always make sure the humidity is low or I wait the next day to do them. So, this, these will come out, uh, this is very good pigment in this, so I expect these to come out in uh, two coats. Yellow. The yellow will probably take three coats. Uh, I'll go back on the red. The red is uh, it's dry enough now to leave down on the other side. So we'll paint the other part of this. Uh, some students coming here in a minute. So, uh, so we'll just do all the red and the other side of all the red, blue, green, and yellow. And then we'll have one coat on everything. And then uh, we'll tomorrow we'll give it. Well, we could give it another coat today, but I'm busy, so I don't. I'm not able to do that. So, uh, so this is the last piece. Then, and then I'm going to do another coat in the morning, and then I'll consider. I'm going to give them a slight sander and I'll give them the second coat then after that. I'll be doing other jobs in between time. So now I have uh, all them painted two coats. Uh, the yellow is a little bit light but uh, they're looking really well. Uh, I'm going to give them the final coat but I'm going to give them a slight sanding first. I mean very very slight only on the faces. Don't don't sand the edges because you will take all the paint off. So just go like that. That's it. And now that's perfectly smooth. But don't, you can sound the end. No, the, sm the end of that is smooth as it is. So uh, we'll do that with them all. Uh, so uh, now I'm giving them their third coat. Uh, the yellow will need a fourth coat. Okay, I kind of guessed that in the beginning, but these are fine. You can see the blue here, the red is fine. And uh, so the yellow here, it's very hard to get a good yellow pigment uh, unless it gets really expensive paint. So, uh, I'm just going to finish them up here then, and uh, that will be the. I will show you. <laughs> I, will, I will give them away then. As soon as the paint is dry, they're going to be given away to some children. And uh, so this is a great starter project for anybody that, uh, that is starting new into carpentry. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for the patience. Uh, we expect you to be skipping through it. Uh, uh, it would be nice if I could get a couple of subscribers out of this and uh, uh, thank you once again for watching and I'll get well soon.